In 1608, Hans Lippershey became a very wealthy man when he designed a device that he claimed could see things far away as if they were nearby. He claimed his machine could glimpse into a world unimaginably larger than our own, using the world's first telescope. The sky doesn't make it easy though, there's so much noise, radiation, gas and dust. You run into trouble when you try to look really, really far, and you also find these problems if you look really, really close. Looking at individual atoms, a world unimaginably smaller than our own. In order to be observed, atoms need to be absolutely still, but people are talking in the room next door, sending chaotic vibrations through the atoms. The secretary's high heels storm down the hall, Wi-Fi and cell phone reception zips through the air, the bus trembles the ground below, and tectonic plates shift, slip and slide. The entire Earth is quivering with energy. The atoms are dancing with life. The problem with looking really, really small is you have to consider the entire universe. In 2012, the Max Planck Institute built one of the most unique spaces in the world, the Precision Lab. Each room here, like the one I'm standing in right now, attempts to isolate itself from the rest of the universe. Thick concrete walls block any acoustics from getting inside. Large tight metal sheets form what's called a Faraday cage, blocking any electric fields from getting in. The entire room sits on a 100 ton slab of concrete held up by highly pressurized air springs. Every cable, pipe and wall is carefully designed to ensure that absolutely nothing can interfere with the experiment. Perhaps the best place for the upcoming zombie apocalypse. Literally earthquakes could be happening outside and we wouldn't even notice. So all of these voices, high heel signals, buses, tectonic plates and everything are not a problem at all. Our atoms are still, however, vibrating with energy, thermal energy, heat. And so we cool them down. We mix two different isotopes of liquid helium together, and that brings our sample down to negative 273.14 degrees Celsius. That's almost absolute zero, and that's almost absolutely no movement. Finally, our atoms are standing still. But even when our atoms are finally under control, it still takes an incredible machine to visualize them. And of course, some incredible scientists. The machine that we use to look at our tiny galaxy of atoms is called a scanning tunneling microscope. It works by bringing down a tiny needle to the surface, just a few tens of a nanometer away. Then we start applying a voltage. This voltage acts kind of like a battery. When the battery is turned on, electrons want to jump up from the atoms and into the needle. This is called the tunneling effect. Now, if there is a lot of electrons jumping from the sample to the needle, this means that the atoms are closer to the needle. If there is fewer electrons tunneling, then the atoms are further away from the needle. Using this information, our computers can make a topography of the atoms. But what we're really interested in is not just the atoms, but what's going on inside the atoms. With the temperature of the STM being so low, we kind of freeze the inside of the atoms as well. And this is so that we can look at, for example, tiny magnetic moments inside the atom, called the spins. This is a smaller world beyond the atomic scale. This is quantum mechanics. And when it's so cold and quiet, what happens if nothing happens? What is there behind the curtain, behind the curtain? Christian's millikelvin STM attempts to literally stop the universe, or at least a very small part of it. It's the Hubble telescope of the nanoscale world. It's one of the few places on Earth that is truly a tranquil, noise-free environment. It's colder and quieter than even outer space. space, space, space.